Okay, thank you very much for a nice introduction. <coughs> um, so my name is Pavel, I'm from uh, SUTD, and today I'm going to present Strong Chain Transparent and Collaborative Proof of Work Consensus, and that's joint work with Daniel and Ivan, also from SUTD, and Siwe from Chinese Academy of Science. So I will start with the introduction of uh, Nakamoto Consensus and Bitcoin, and what is great about this protocol that actually you can explain it in a few slides. So uh, whenever Alice would like to move some Bitcoins to, uh, to Bob, she creates a transaction, she signs the transaction and broadcasts it to the network of consensus nodes, which are called miners. Then miners collect like transactions um, and try to create a block of these transactions. And they do it by finding uh, uh, such a block that its header can satisfy a hash inequality then the hash of its header is less than some predefined target. And <coughs> efficient way of the, the only ef efficient way of doing this is just to incrementing brute force, incrementing some nonce in the header and checking this an, an inequality. And whenever a miner finds it, uh, the miner broadcasts uh, such block to the network, uh, then this block is uh, validated by other nodes who eventually accept it and transaction is executed, which means that uh, oh, excuse me. Which means that basically Alice uh, is moving her bitcoins to uh, to Bob. Uh, miner will get uh, will get some some reward from the system, and also miner will get uh, some transaction fee uh, from the Alice. So if you see at this protocol, there's block publishing. It's actually very interesting because it has like three functions. So it contains transactions. It also confirms all the previous transactions because it has like hash pointer to the pre previous blocks. And also it proves that someone is like leader, okay? And this leader election is like non-interactive process. And thanks to this non-interactive leader election and verification, actually the protocol can scale to like thousands of these consensus nodes. However, there is price for uh, this scalability. So uh, it's possibility of inconsistency. And its consistency is something very unusual as for transaction systems. So in Bitcoin, what can happen is that two miners will basically find roughly at the same time uh, blocks which are concurrent. So then what will happen, the network will start competing on these blocks. They will start mining. And the protocol divides, defines this as soon as one chain will be longer, then miners should switch to this chain. And in this case, the bottom chain it will be not part of the uh, of the, chain, of the uh, ledger history. The transactions will not count. Um, and the security argument here is that as long as 50% of the computing power, of the total computing power is honest, the honest chain should always, uh, should always win this race. However, there is a very interesting uh, result, uh, which is called selfish mining. So here we assume adversary with minority computing power, like 30-35%. Um, <coughs> who from time to time is lucky to find like three or two blocks in a row. So what this selfish miner is doing then is just keeping this block secret. Okay, so they are not published to the network, no one knows about, about them. And in that case, the, the, the rest of the network is just mining on the, on the top of the uh, known, uh, known um, block. And when... And adversary actually can get some advantage because adversary only knows about this, this secret fork. However, over time, like uh, the majority of the computing power will basically uh, catch up with the chain. And just before it happens, in the selfish mining, the adversary will publish, uh, will publish this secret fork, which will basically invalidate all this visible fork created by honest, uh, honest ma um, majority. And it's actually quite counterintuitive what this attack happens, but here the core idea is that like selfish miner, because of variance of proof of work, will get lucky a few times in a row and will just get advantage of that. And this is why reason why uh, this kind of attacks are is one reason why many researchers actually believe it's very difficult to uh, have like secure proof of work uh, protocol. Uh, another aspect is that with increasing Bitcoin price, the mining process got like extremely ex uh, competitive. So basically, <coughs> uh, mining is like zero-sum game. So miners started to completing and like competing, and like solo miners uh, with like increasing total hash power would need to 
spent like 10 years of, for instance, of, to find a blog. So what they decided to do to stabilize the revenue, they decided to create uh, mining pools. Okay, so mining pool works in the way that it has like manager who basically validates the transaction, creates new blocks, and the rest of the network is mining, uh, mining this trans uh, rest of the pool is mining this transaction. Whenever uh, a pool finds a block, the reward is shared among pool members. However, the problem is that from the protocol perspective, like this pool uh, is like a single entity in the protocol. And here you can see the distribution of the computing power in the Bitcoin network. So here you see like three, the biggest mining pools basically have like 50% of uh, total like voting computing power. And obviously there is some trade-off between the security, this is a selfish mining and like mining experience. And because of mining experience, like miners decided to join this mining pools, but this like increases security because the number of validating nodes is getting very small. And this is one, uh, one big challenge uh, to, to be solved in these protocols. Okay, so uh, I will now describe our protocol and I will start with a few observations. So in the current system in Nakamoto consensus, this proof of work is not expressed very well. We see only blocks and this is the only unit of like proof of work we see and the rest of the work that miners did is just wasted. Also, it's like zero-sum game. So at the protocol level, uh, miners don't have any incentive to actually collaborate. They, they compete. And when they decide to collaborate by creating these mining pools, then basically they create like huge centralization risks. OK, so uh, first thing we modify uh, in our instruction, our protocol, is basically the mining process. So now we have uh, two targets with different difficulties. We have strong targets uh, and weak target. And strong target is much more difficult to be satisfied. So uh, the mining is very similar. So in the case when uh, hash of the header of given block uh, is less than, than, than strong target, the miner will propagate the block. And in the case whether the, the hash of this header is between, uh, these two targets, the miner will basically broadcast header. So uh, it's much easier to find like this, this weak headers than this strong solutions. So we will have like, um, uh, we'll have like number of strokes of this weak headers expected as a uh, ratio between these two targets. However, when miner finds like the strong solution, the miner will create a block uh, which will contain transactions and all weak headers which point to the same previous block. Okay, so the mining will go like this, and as I said, like, <coughs> it's much easier to find like a weak headers, and conceptually you can see uh, at this that like this weak headers is basically like a vote, like a support for the block, and blocks are created through this strong, strong solution, strong headers. Okay, so another modification we introduce is like fork resolution, so we follow the strongest uh, chain rule, which is like similar to what, what Bitcoin does. However, the one modification is that we uh, like change the uh, calculation of the strength of given chain. So basically, uh, the chain strength is computed as number of the block of this chain multiplied by, uh, how, but multiplied by how difficult it's to find like this uh, strong header. Uh, so here Tmax is like a, just a constant. And we sum and we add also like number of the weak headers which are within a given chain multiplied by how difficult it's find you know, given weak, weak header and multiply by some parameter delta I will discuss later. So uh, basically in this case as presented where we have two concurrent block BI and BI prime, the miners will just decide immediately to follow uh, BI, BI because it's just stronger, it has more these weak headers. So in our protocol, we have like, uh, like this proof of work power is expressed better. Uh, so it helps us with solving the selfish mining attacks. And the intuition why it helps us is, is the following. So let's just assume that we have uh, like this weak target, which is like set to maximum value, which means that every miner would just compute, uh, would just publish all hashes computed, okay? So in this case, we represent the like, computing power like perfectly. 
And selfish mining is, is impossible because like 30% adversary would always compute 30% of total hashes. Obviously, we cannot like send to the network all the hashes. Uh, so then we can balance this uh, by, by, by changing this, uh, this, this weak target for the level that is acceptable by the network. Okay, so another element we change is like rewards and incentive. So we have base reward as in Bitcoin, which is here denoted R. So uh, block creators receive like uh, this base reward and transaction fees. And weak header finder basically gets a reward which is proportional to how difficult uh, it was to find a given header multiplied by some uh, parameter gamma I will mention later. Uh, what is critical then, uh, strong chain is not like zero sum game anymore. So rewards are independent and not shared. So block creators can only actually gain by including quick headers. And there is no reward limit per block, which implies uh, inflation. And as Bitcoin has uh, like built in def deflation, it's like, it may be like seen as very controversial by some parts of the Bitcoin community. However, it's in line with some recent research about security uh, of insecurity of like Bitcoin deflation. Okay, so um, first result I would like to present you is like decentralization, which we define like reward variance. So on the left, you can see uh, coefficient of variation depending on the miner's, miner's power. So what you can see is that miners in strong chain can have like 100% weaker computing power, but still have the same reward variance as in, uh, as in Bitcoin. Okay, so how it translates to uh, like mining pools. So on the right, you can see list of the largest mining pools in Bitcoin, and they share in the total computing power. So for instance, the, the largest mining pool, BTC.com, which has like 18% of uh, Bitcoin computing power, uh, in strong chain, the equivalent mining pool with the same variance of reward uh, could be as small as 0.25%. So effectively, we could have like a large number of uh, like small pools. Uh, okay, security is another aspect I would like to discuss briefly. So we have weak headers. So the protocol is rough, uh, a bit more difficult to analyze than, than Bitcoin because we have like new factor. Um, however, we analyze this, so on the left you can see a variant of selfish mining uh, compared with Bitcoin. Uh, so for instance, if we take strong chain with a number of expected headers, 1,024 um, in, in like one block, you can see that in Bitcoin, like the selfish mining starts uh, to be profitable w when adversary is like larger than like 33%. So in strong chain, we move it to like 44, 45% which is like 10% better, is actually pretty close to, um, to this 50% bound. Uh, okay, we also did some initial anal analysis with Markov decision process to find like optimal strategy, but we didn't find anything better than, uh, significantly better than the one presented here. Uh, also on the right, you can see adversaries who would like to uh, not broadcast her, her weak headers. So you can see that basically adversary is losing uh, a lot in this case. Uh, which implies that uh, adversary has like incentive actually to help the protocol to broadcast uh, wh whatever she computed. So another aspect of abuse. So usually blockchain protocols are analyzed in the with the security in mind. So basically they define security as advantage of the adversary, how much adversary can gain and so on. So we uh, also analyze how, uh, how adversary can actually abuse the system. So one interesting strategy we found, we call it spiteful mining is that where adversary does not include minor, does not include weak headers of other miners. So adversary is publishing all the weak headers, but is not including uh, other miners' weak headers. So in terms of like absolute payoff, uh, adversary is gaining nothing. It's like the same as it was. However, it can harm a bit, uh, a bit other miners, which you can see uh, on the left. Uh, so the reason why it works is that this low variance actually helps also adversary to, 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 to apply this strategy. We found very interesting trade-offs. So security versus abuse versus efficiency. Uh, so I mentioned about this gamma, which is like a parameter regulating how weak headers are rewarded. And delta, which says like um, how weak headers count in the computation of, of the chain strength. Uh, and they have like very important influence on the properties of the system. 
So when we increase uh, gamma, it improves like security decentralization. Uh, when we increase like delta, it like mitigates this abuse, this spiteful mining. However, combined with high, like, higher network latency, it increases fork rate. So there are some ideas how to mitigate also spiteful mining, but for instance, paying uh, block finders proportionally to the number of found, uh, found weak headers. However, with adjusting this parameter, we can just, uh, we can just find nice balance between these trade-offs. And our choice is to have like higher, higher gamma and low delta. Okay, so we implemented our protocol for efficiency. We modify Bitcoin headers, so we added like Coinbase, uh, Coinbase address field in the header. Uh, we also added like a binding transaction to basically uh, protect integrity of these weak headers. And with 1,024 expected weak, weak headers per round, uh, which number we, we suggest, the bandwidth overhead introduced is like 6% uh, in relation to Bitcoin. And uh, total CPU overhead is like 50 milliseconds uh, to validate all, all those headers. However, it's, it's an optimized uh, implementation. Okay, so in conclusion, I would like to say that expressing proof of work more accurately with aligned incentives provides multiple benefits. So we'll first of all, we have like better decentralization, uh, security, and also we improve other properties like timestamp accuracy. This is something I didn't have time to talk about, but you can look uh, into the paper. Uh, the changes are relatively simple and easy to the, to the Bitcoin. And in the future or ongoing work, uh, we work on uh, the proof of work set, uh, proof of stake setting for, for, for similar protocol and extended analysis with abuse modeling of other systems and combinations uh, of other systems with, with, with strong tree. Uh, thank you very much. I'm happy to take questions. Hi, nice talk. Thank you. Uh, one of the reasons we have mining pools is not the selfish mining, it's the fact that there is very low network latency between the yeah. pool nodes, like they have proprietary protocols. Yeah. Have you modeled this when you saw the difference between strong chain and classic Bitcoin? No, we, we, we haven't modeled that. Is it possible to put it in the system? Like I, how I much I, more latency would be if you are actually decentralized? Sure, so I, I, th I think it would be possible with some assumptions to simulate that. The problem is that, like, uh, ideally we could we, we could use like Bitcoin network and check it, but that probably will not happen uh, soon, at least. Uh, but I think that the main main point is that like uh, we could have like we, we could give this by this, by minimizing this reward variance, we could like multiply by factor of ten or twenty, and I think that network would handle that and that should be acceptable, given that like the uh, block frequency is like ten minutes and so on. So I think that that should be, okay. that should be possible. Okay. Okay, then I have another question. Sure. Have you looked into, like, there are other protocols like fruit chains that do very similar things, you know, sure. weak and strong blocks. Sure. Have you compared with those? Sure, so, so we can look into related wor okay. work at our section, so we discuss. Uh, yeah, there, there is a bunch of uh, similar work, mm -hmm. um, but you can discuss and we compare okay. them. Is there like a key thing that's novel to you that we should have in mind compared R to the other ones? Right, so, so <laughs> most, of the, most of the systems which use this kind of weak solutions, they build like chain of these weak solutions okay. together. And the problem with these this approaches is that you can do selfish mining on this chain of these okay. weak, weak headers, right? And yeah, so, so we're in the related work with Okay, guys. thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Pavel.